Good day. I'm Hatu, regional correspondent for Asian Agribees based in Vietnam. I'm happy to welcome you to another podcast by Asian Agribees. In this interview, our editorial director, Kony Pereira, talks to Eileen Supriyadi, senior analyst at Euromonitor International, about some of the trends that are encouraging growth for the animal protein industry, despite the challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Good day, Eileen. Welcome, and on behalf of Asian Agribus, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Yeah, thank you for inviting me here as well. Eileen, today we're going to address trends that trigger growth for the animal protein industry. So you know that the animal protein industry in Asia has remained robust despite the dents brought on by COVID-19. In the past year, Asian Agribis has seen a significant degree of transformation in terms of innovation, convenience, technology adoption, food safety, and paring down on prices. So all of this is consistent with your latest report on the top 10 global consumer trends of 2021. Eileen, your report addressed the behavioral reset and how consumers are seeking brands that help make the world cleaner, healthier, more resilient and equitable. What can meat producers do to drive this agenda? Okay, so uh, before COVID-19, consumers were concerned about climate change, environment uh, issues and so on. But with the widespread of COVID-19, Consumers are also more worried about health and well-being of their communities, including the workforce and the producers of the food products that they consume. So definitely it is important for manufacturers to ensure that their workforce is more resilient and equitable. And for producers, including meat producers, it is also important to gain the trust of the society by solving an imminent problem in the society with regards to food distribution and food production. So first of all, there is a need to answer the pressing issue of an inefficient food distribution system where there are multiple intermediaries between farmers and consumers. And this problem actually leads to price fluctuations where farmers and meat producers sometimes are being paid unfairly. And to resolve this issue of inefficient food chain, local producers and retailers can utilize the search in grocery e-commerce in the region. And some examples that I can bring to you is actually the farm-to-table platforms that we can see in Indonesia and in Japan. In Indonesia, there are two agri-tech businesses such as Tani Hub and Sayupox that are connecting the producers directly to consumers. So this uh, platform will eliminate unnecessary intermediaries and therefore giving fair pay to local producers while actually fulfilling consumers' demand for fresh groceries at lower and more stable prices. And these uh, initiatives and startup actually saw a stronger demand with the rising grocery e-commerce in the country that grew more than double in 2020 compared to previous year. And if we look at Indonesia alone, the grocery e-commerce actually reached 1.5 billion US dollar in 2020. So uh, with COVID-19, in the face of disrupted logistic and distribution chain, embracing omnichannel and uh, embracing e-commerce actually helps meat producers to be more resilient in facing disruption by enabling the continuation of sales and distribution, helping producers to obtain more equitable and fairer pay by eliminating intermediaries and possible markups for their products. In addition to that, actually direct purchase of meat and agricultural production help consumers to obtain fresher and hence higher quality products uh, without the worry of contamination as well as microbial growth uh, where uh, in the case of uh, non-direct distribution. Yes, Eileen, trust is so important in food production and distribution as is efficiency. Now this brings us to convenience. This has leaped with work from home and food service closures. 
In a sense, it has driven consumers from bricks to clicks and away from traditional markets. Uh, but with income shrinking and a significant distribution channel, i.e. food service in retreat, what can meat producers do to maintain, if not boost, patronage of their products? So when we look at convenience, we can look at it from two different angles. Firstly, is the convenience of obtaining the product. And secondly, is the convenience that the product itself offers to consumers. The first aspect can be obtained through uh, e-commerce that I have previously mentioned. So, with regards to online delivery services, fresh meat distribution from farm to table distribution continues to provide a solution for, to, uh, to consumers as well as to producers. But producers have to think about how to go to consumers directly while making sure that it is the most efficient and economical way which sometimes is a problem for smaller producers. For bigger companies, they may have the capacity to distribute directly to consumers. For example, if we look at Masan Group in Vietnam, through its fin commerce business segment, within 2020 alone, the company has to refocus their stores and distribution through some closure of their stores, but improving their minimal model supermarket, and online grocery platform. This is especially supporting the demand for their fresh products, which include finico vegetables as well as meat daily fresh pork. But uh, such uh, distribution using, the, using companies' own logistical distribution chain, it can be a challenge for smaller producers or local producers in which engaging third-party delivery services or finding other solutions to create a more cost-efficient cost efficient delivery services will be a much better option. If we look at India, for example, there is Dabur, an FMCG company focusing on natural healthcare products. They have engaged uh, services like Swiggy and Tungso to tap into their delivery knowledge and expertise. Likewise, in Southeast Asia, with the growth of delivery platforms, smaller local producers and uh, local sellers are able to utilize third-party delivery services, such as Foodpanda, GrabFood uh, in Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. This actually enables small medium sellers or local producers to deliver their products, including fresh products like meat and seafood directly to consumers. And additionally, the, there is a possibility for community group purchase scheme, which is another way in which producers are able to save on delivery fees. And at the same time, consumers also enjoy cheaper price as well as maintaining a small number of contacts. And the, the second convenience that I mentioned previously was to uh, the product offering itself, which can be identified and if and these opportunities may come through innovations. So if we look at convenience food product in Asia Pacific, we see that ready meals have grown into a 35 billion US dollar industry in 2020. This is attributed to the impact of COVID-19 uh, that has changed consumers' habit, where us as a consumers, we are spending more time at home hence increasing the dine-in occasions. But at the same time, consumers have limited knowledge and time to cook for themselves, given that they have to juggle between different responsibilities, such as homemaking, working, as well as teaching their children simultaneously. So Ready Meals presents a solution for consumers to have that cooking experiences, making sure that the food is safe and healthy, as well as shortens the cooking time significantly to a fraction of what it would take if they were to cook and prepare from scratch. Therefore, uh, this growth, as well as po potential in ready meals, actually provides opportunities for meat producers to market and create innovations for their products. Not only meat products can be sold as fresh meat or processed meat like frozen meat or shelf-stable meat or through food services, it can also be sold to industries to be converted or packaged as ready-to-cook or ready-to-eat products. 
Eileen, your report addressed the happy collision between the physical and digital worlds. How big a role will or can digital play in enhancing the virtual experience and driving sales? Okay, so in digital reality, consumers are able to seamlessly live, work and play both in person and online. With regards to consumption and purchases, businesses will be able to integrate digital processes into physical spaces. So in digital play, there are several key points to this that are relevant to the food industry. But for uh, today's discussion, I will focus on these three points that are digital marketing, digital payment, and digital order. Firstly, businesses are more active on online platforms to market their products and to increase awareness and engagement of consumers. From engaging influencers and building their presence through social media to online exhibitions which have been done by several marketplaces in Southeast Asia like Shopee, digital marketing can also be used to, for, to ensure product pickup by consumers. In China, WH Group, which is the largest pork producing company in China, actually utilized live streaming platform provided by Tinmall to broadcast and promote their processed meat. During this live, live stream itself, consumers can purchase the meat products and such uh, opportunity will replace the normal human interaction that consumers typically will have in traditional retailers like wet markets. And secondly, digital payments and digital wallets have been adopted widely across countries uh, and one example is in India, where one out of four Indians are now using online payments. And another example can be seen in Philippines, where 7-Eleven also offers contactless payment like Click and Gcash. This is actually a phenomenon that we observe in global countries as well, where based on our digital payment survey, Almost 30% of our global respondents indicated that they have used digital wallet for purchases online or in-store. And the last point that is related to digital that I would like to discuss is about digital orders. Coupled with delivery or self-pickup that have also been taken advantage of by food and beverage companies. So COVID-19 has actually shifted behavioral preferences towards contact-free interactions between operators and consumers. Yes, Eileen, I agree that the emphasis on wellness, health and safety has grown. At Asian Agribiz, we too have tracked many meat processes that have not only adopted health and safety measures at their production facilities and farms, but are also gradually moving into products with health signatures but this comes at a higher price. How ready are Asian consumers for this shift? Um, it's actually true that the pandemic has left consumers with lower disposable income, but it actually forces them to reprioritize what is important for them. And at this point, many are prioritizing their health and safety, and a lot of them are willing to pay for products that are seen to be good for their health and are able to boost their immune system. So, for instance, Meat Daily, the pioneer for packaged fresh pork in Vietnam uh, that is produced by Masan Group, is actually seeing a growth in 2020 uh, during the pandemic. Masan Group reported that they have seen an 11% quarterly growth in the third quarter of 2020, reaching 25 million US dollar sales. This... Uh, Revenue growth of the company is actually contributed, 27% contributed by meat delis, fresh and packaged pork products, as these products are seen to be a safer option in comparison to unpackaged fresh meat, which were found to be more common in Vietnam. Another example of healthier meat innovation is evident from the development of Benja chicken by city groups in Thailand. The chickens are bearing hormone and antibiotic-free labels, and they are also fed with brown rice grains containing antioxidants as well as vitamin B complex. This 
development addresses consumers' demand for natural, delicious, and healthy food ingredients. If you look beyond meat products, plant-based products are also seen to be gaining interest among consumers, despite its, the initial worry of a high price. So, while healthier products can be of higher price and perceived to be more premium, the most, the most important strategy is to generate that awareness to reach out to mass consumers and to subsequently create the demand. Once the demands have been created, productions may be amplified, leading to the capacity and the ability to push the price down, similar to how plant-based products are increasingly able to slash its price in retail, like what Impossible Food has done. This uh, is definitely an important learning point that meat producers can also take into account when they are introducing healthier or, uh, or meat products with health benefit. Finally, Eileen, Euromonitor's report mentioned that flexibility, agility, transparency and technology will pave the way forward. What is your advice for the meat production industry? So when we look at FMCG companies, including food and beverage companies, including meat production industry, everyone, are indeed, everyone is indeed required to be agile and flexible in facing any disruptions occurring in the industry. While some may choose to innovate quickly to meet demands, others may choose to collaborate and partner with different uh, companies and dif or different industries, such as collaboration with delivery platforms or collaboration with food service industries to reach out to mass consumers and a wider consumer group. With meat products, especially fresh meat, maintaining product quality and safety from production centers to consumers is key. So improper handling may actually risk quality reduction and have the risk of microbial development in the products that can introduce risk to consumers' health. With such danger and risk, logistical and distribution chains therefore have to be properly managed, including the cold chain that is maintained throughout the distribution and warehouses. So with the fast developing delivery service and on-demand third-party delivery services growing in the market, meat producers may consider collaborations and tie up to release their products online, tapping into their cold chain and logistical networks from other companies that have been in the delivery or distribution industry for a longer time. All in all, taking into account digital technology is definitely an important move, especially with the growth in the number of people adopting seamless digital experiences. Thus, it is vital to be flexible and agile in using digital platforms. As consumers spend more time on the internet, Producers also need to understand the platform where they are able to meet consumers. Even with the growing number of social media usage, does not mean it does not mean that producers from different countries can use the same uh, type of social media to react to interact and reach to consumers in different countries. For example, more than ninety five percent of consumers in China are using WeChat. Whereas in Indonesia, the majority of the consumers are using WhatsApp. Producers could use all these different platforms to connect with consumers, gain sales and engage consumers, or even accept orders through these platforms, through these social media platforms, like what has been seen in Indonesia and China. So in conclusion, in order for us to be in order for um meat production industry to be flexible, agile and transparent as well as Using the technology that is available, they are also they also need to have the knowledge of what the consumers are using and what the consumers are used to in each of the market that they are in, in order for them to react and utilize what consumers are using itself. Eileen, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure and we really appreciate your valuable insights. Thank you so much for the opportunity as well. We hope you found this discussion interesting. 
Some of the take home messages from this podcast are consumers are concerned about climate change, the environment, as well as the well being of their families and the workforce that produces their food. Producers should leverage this and gain the trust of consumers. Meat producers should leverage demand for ready meals through innovation and value addition. Consumers prioritized healthy, nutritious, and delicious meat products, and this again presents an opportunity for producers. With 24 years on the ground in Asia, Asian AgriBees offer you timely and relevant insights into the animal protein industry.